Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess, we confess that we have sinned against you. Closing your will in our lives, we have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was, was ministering to the Lord unto Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been yet revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he called you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. From Psalm 139. 
Oh God, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh God, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O oh God, how great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. The second reading is from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you have not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? And Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? Truly, I tell you, you will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. The gospel of our Lord. I praise you, Lord Christ. In the name of God who creates and redeems and makes all things new. Amen. Well, I have had a look online anyway at the security fencing that has been put up around the United States Capitol for the inauguration on Wednesday. And I can attest that it looks very tall and very imposing and very unwelcoming to foot traffic, which seems good given reports that federal law enforcement agencies have been alarmed by increased chatter 
from right-wing extremists threatening to target Washington in further protest uh, that Donald J. Trump has continued to be the loser of the presidential popular and electoral vote. Despite last week's insurrection and all 50 states have reported calls for armed protest, but it isn't yet clear whether such protests will materialize. Anyway, all the threats extend through the actual inauguration events on Wednesday, January 20th. Are you wondering what this information has to do with the second Sunday in Epiphany? Or for that matter, with the national observance of Martha Luther King Jr. Day? Well, there's the fact that the Wednesday, January 9th insurrection against the Congress was itself a major epiphany for many in this country. An epiphany, according to Wikipedia, is an experience of a sudden or striking realization that allows a problem or situation to be understood from a new and deeper perspective. In the instant case, old fashioned white supremacy has morphed into Christian nationalism, both of which are antithetical to constitutional notions of the equality of persons. And all of this is painful to face. This death grip grasping of power by a paranoid failed president that reminds us while we are in epiphany of nothing so much as King Herod's alleged willingness to slaughter young boys around Bethlehem at the time of the nativity. And as representative Liz Cheney put it, there has never been a greater betrayal by a president of the United States of his office and his oath to the constitution. Well, we all of us have lots to grieve and much to lament in the evil and the idiocy of this time, all the time that preceded it. Where were our minds and our hearts and our consciences? Martin Luther King once said, Cowardice asks the question, is it safe? And expediency asks the question, is it politic? And vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but one must take it because one's conscience tells one that it is right, end quote. Our consciences have been waiting for someone to tell us what to do. We're all pretty sure that this is not what we wanted and it's not what we were promised, but we're still accountable because our commitment as Christian disciples, we are baptized that gives rise to our Christian accountability. Here's how Reinhold Niebuhr put it. Man's capacity for justice makes democracy possible, but man's inclination to injustice makes democracy necessary. And even so, it isn't the remembered theology, but the down to earth life and trials of a Martin Luther King Jr. that opened such a huge window onto the reality of God in our current plight and how God works between the lines for our redemption. Ordinarily on this Sunday, we would be hearing about the work of John the Baptist. In this pericope though, the baptizing is over. And what's left is Jesus's invitation to Philip and to his cousin Nathaniel to come follow him. Philip is sold on Jesus immediately. Nathaniel, not so much, mainly because he's unimpressed with Jesus's family and geographical credentials. But Philip doesn't argue with Nathaniel. He just says, come and see for yourself what Jesus is about. That is the same thing Jesus told Philip and it's our own call to come and see for ourselves 
Martin Luther King did exactly that. And the rest is, as we know, history, which is still being written. The way that Martin Luther King led Jesus, the way that Jesus led Martin Luther King, this works much better, is significantly different than Herod's way, or for that matter, Donald Trump's way. A colleague of mine pointed out recently the startling difference between the way of Jesus and the way of the dictators and kings of our own world. It's visceral when you get it. The Christian life, she pointed out, is not about power. It's not about dominance. It's not about protecting our privilege. It is set out perfectly in Philippians, uh, chapter 2, verses 6 to 8, for those of you who want to look it up. In Jesus, God came to earth as a powerless human infant. And as Paul writes, being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, end quote. Throughout Jesus's life, he cared for and associated with the poor and the powerless and the marginalized. And he was not motivated to save his own skin in a crunch when his ministry clashed with the powers of the world. It occurred to me, of course they crucified him. Of course they killed Martin Luther King Jr. Neither holy men nor women nor prophets, let alone the son of God, can be counted upon to save themselves. They speak the truth and they cannot be controlled and there is not a Herod or a dictator in this world capable of overcoming the love that they and we share in Jesus Christ. And this is where we are today. Faced with this gospel, which may not be immediate good news for us. It's all there, the hope, the comfort, the dream, the promise of redemption. But this gospel tells us also that like the disciples and like Martin, something is required of us. And we have a part to play in the world's salvation. Jesus's come and see will give us the dream, but it will also demand that we listen with God and with the other disciples and with each other to the cries of those who are hurt and cheated and spat upon in our own world. The call from Jesus means we cannot accept under any circumstances power or privileges that are withheld from others, especially when such power and privilege is built upon the lives and miseries of those others. What Jesus calls us to do is the work of mercy and justice and peace and kindness, however and wherever and whenever we can. And we know this, it is the church as the beloved community that can so embody the hope of Christ, the whole world will want to come and see and be glad. Being a Christian, wrote presiding Bishop Michael Curry, is really not essentially about joining a church or being a nice person. It's about following in the footsteps of Jesus, taking his teachings seriously, letting his spirit take the lead in our lives and in so doing, helping to change the world from our nightmare into God's dream. In other words, as Michael also says, if it's not about love, it's not about God. Amen. Let us say together the Nicene Creed, found at page three. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, to be God from true God. God, from true God. 
God and not me, that I might be with the Father, through him all things to me. Cross and cross of salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the words of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to just the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has so spoken, spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and a Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we At commemorate the very one. This begins all his first disciples, and we remember blessed Martin Luther King Jr. with gratitude for his witness. Gather us to your heart. Increase our commitment to the baptismal vows we have made to follow you. Give our spiritual leaders wisdom, patience, and guidance. Pray for God's people and their leaders. As we survey the news of the nations, Sharpen our attention to what is happening in the world, around us, and in our own country. Compel us to pray for those in authority and for the people they govern, that there may be peace between nations and neighbors. Pray for God's people and their leaders. As we build relationships with those with whom we live and work, open our eyes to your presence in their lives and the ways we can serve you by serving them. Pray for God's people and their leaders. As we see those who suffer in any way, especially those who suffer from the coronavirus and those who seek to heal them, increase our capacity to love and to pray. Pray for those who are suffering with illness and the struggles of life and those who strive to help. As we say goodbye to those who have departed this life, comfort us in our grief, assuring us of your love. Pray for those who have died. God of justice and mercy, who delivered your people from the oppression of Pharaoh, protect us also from greed, ignorance, and malevolence, and our political leaders, and help us make our nation one of peace, liberty, and justice in harmony with your creation and exhibiting the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come. The peace of Christ be always with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed be God who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaim good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he was at table with his friends, he took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you. He gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you, the, to you these gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. All this we ask through your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray in whatever words bring us closest to God. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 
the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Together we say the form of spiritual communion. Blessed Jesus, I believe that we are fed with the spiritual food of your body and blood. Your body and blood. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally today, I now offer to receive you and my soul. Unite my heart with those of my community gathered to offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and make us all one with you. May the spiritual communion strengthen my faith and grant me confidence in your loving care, now and forever, amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in your hearts and fill your lives with joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon, rest upon you, you and those you love wherever they may be in God's kingdom this day and forevermore. Amen. Straight 
from the places, our oh God, where we met thee, lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee, shadowed by beneath the Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah.